Good morning. We welcome you once again to our Golden Lampstand online service. God is good and He's good all the time and it's a privilege to come into His presence once again to proclaim His goodness, to proclaim glory unto Him, to proclaim that God is good all the time. Let me start off by reading Psalm 33 verses 18 to 22. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in His unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are a God of goodness. And even this morning, we thank you that we can put our hope in your unfailing love and even as we gather in your presence even though we are online let that unfailing love of yours just surround each and every one of us and descend upon each one of us we thank you and we praise you in the lord jesus name we pray amen Ought to do 
Yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. I then, as Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who has become my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favour you do will be spontaneous and not forced. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back for good, no longer as a slave but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me but even dearer to you both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And even as we look into your word today, we invite your Holy Spirit to be upon us. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Speak to us, minister into our hearts, that even as we open this scripture, enlighten every one of us. Let this truth become a part of our lives, even as we meditate upon your word today. In the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'd like to share with you uh, concerning Paul's letter to Philemon, or some call it Philemon. Now Philemon was a, a member of the church in Colossae, but he was not only a member, he was also the leader of the church there, and the church met in his home. And Philemon was a very wealthy man, he had slaves, and uh, the message of this letter was concerning one of his slaves. One of his slaves named Onesimus had run away, and it's believed that Onesimus had stolen his master's money and had run away. And while he was running away, he met Paul when Paul was in chains, when Paul was in prison, believed to be the time when Paul was in Rome. And while he had met Paul, Paul shared the gospel with Onesimus and Onesimus had received the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So that is the context that we are looking at. And now Onesimus had become a helper to Paul and was of much assistance to Paul while he was in prison in Rome. But the time had come when Onesimus needed to be sent back to his master Philemon. And Paul uh, needs to send him back, but Paul writes this letter uh, to Philemon as he sends Onesimus back. To Philemon. Now the purpose of this letter is basically to plead on behalf of Onesimus, to tell Philemon, number one, that his slave Onesimus is safe, but much more than safe, that his slave is now a saved person, he is saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. So his plea is that Philemon would forgive Onesimus and not only forgive him, but receive him back. And not only to receive him back, but to receive him back as a brother, much more than a slave. To receive him as a brother in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's basically what this letter is all about. And Paul says in verse 17, So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. The word down there, proslambano, basically says, to take him to yourself, to take him and, and make him a part of yourself, to receive him. So that is basically the purpose of this letter. So uh, we want to look at this letter because what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross is basically to redeem us, to redeem us in the sense that the Lord Jesus Christ now gave him his life for us on the cross and by giving his life on the cross for us, 
he interceded with the father and he asked the father to receive us back as we as the father would receive him so we look at it a little bit more in detail one of the things paul says in this letter is paul says that whatever that Onesimus owes you whatever Onesimus has stolen from you whatever Onesimus needs to return to you I will pay it you you charge it to me you charge it to me and that's what the Lord Jesus Christ did that whatever sins that we have committed whatever wrong that we have done he tells the father to charge it to him and that's why he died on the cross so after many years of preaching the word of God as Paul comes to the end of his life he demonstrates the gospel in his life so we want to look at this letter and we want to discover what Paul was saying to uh, Philemon or Philemon uh, in accordance to the situation with Onesimus but much more than that we want to see what God is speaking to us about what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us upon the cross so now Paul is not only preaching the gospel but he's preaching it through his life so let's look at it point one forgiveness and acceptance is an element of love verse 8 and 9 therefore although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do yet I appeal to you on the basis of love the first thing I want to share with you is that forgiveness and acceptance is an element of love. And Paul says to Philemon that I could command you or I could instruct you to forgive Onesimus. But I want you to do it on the basis of love because Paul, as the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the one who brings the gospel to Colossae, as the one who has brought uh, Philemon himself into the faith he says that I can command you and I can I can demand that you forgive Onesimus but I want you to do it spontaneously from within yourself on the basis of love now so the first thing we want to capture is in order for us to forgive others and accept others they both work hand in hand it must come from the genuine love that's within us and that's the first thing that Paul says that you need to forgive but your forgiveness and your acceptance must be internal it cannot be external I can command you to forgive I can command you to accept but when it comes I want it to come from within you on the basis of love now he goes on to say I then as Paul an old man and also a prisoner for Christ Jesus I appeal to you for my son Onesimus who has become my son while I was in chains so he says and I appeal to you I plead to you on behalf of my son and he says that he has become my son when I was in chains now the, the first thing I, I note there is the word son because when we speak about the son we speak about the father and Paul has become a father to Onesimus so I reflect on our father in heaven and the first thing we, we see is before we forgive, the Father has already forgiven. The Father is a God who forgives. In other words, God has already forgiven, so we need to forgive. We need to release that forgiveness. That's the first uh, comment I would like to make. And the second comment that I would like to make is Paul says, that I appeal to you as a father, and it brings me back to John chapter 3 verse 16 now John chapter 3 verse 16 basically says uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so the father loves the world the father loves us who have become his children father loves his sons and daughters all of us that he would send his son into the world so a picture I get here is a picture of the father in heaven who appeals to his son the Lord Jesus Christ and he says that on behalf of his children, each and every one of us, on behalf of the world, he appeals to his son that his son would go and die on the cross for us. So that's the picture I get from Paul's appeal to Philemon or Philemon. Uh, it's an appeal that the father is appealing 
on behalf of us. So I get a picture of the Father because the Word of God says that the Father loved the world and the Father sent the Son. So I get a picture of the Father appealing to the Son. And Paul says that he has become my son while I was in chains. And, and it tells me something else that while we were in chains, God had already become our Father and was already appealing for us. And I believe that this appeal for us started in the Garden of Eden when, when man had fallen, God was already appealing for us who are His children that we are now in chains but He is appealing for us. Now, uh, Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more so god wants to blot out he wants to take away our transgressions for his own sake and he wants to remember our sins no more and as we move on i would like to just quickly mention three principles concerning forgiveness that the lord jesus christ taught us now uh, forgiveness is part of our lives uh, forgiveness and acceptance is part of love, is part of how we love one another. The first thing that the Lord Jesus Christ said, principle one, is forgive those who sin against you. We need to forgive those who have sinned against us. Matthew 6.12 says, and forgive us our sins just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. I'm using the ISV here. So uh, we need to forgive others because God has forgiven our sins. Matthew 18, 21 and 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother uh, when he sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. So the Lord Jesus Christ said, we need to forgive. We need to forgive and we need to forgive and not only forgive, but we need to forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive. Now the second principle that we need to know is forgive and we will be forgiven. We need to forgive in order to be forgiven. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Luke 6, 37. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. In our prayer, we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Thomas Watson said this, we need not climb into heaven to see whether our sins are forgiven. Let us look into our hearts and see if we can forgive others. What he was basically saying is, in order for us to know that our sins are forgiven, we just need to look into our hearts to see if we have forgiven others. And that's basically what he said. Principle number three, do not forgive and you will not be forgiven. Matthew 6.15 says, But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Mark 11.25, the Lord Jesus Christ said, But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. One of the things that troubles me concerning Matthew 6.15, which basically says, If you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive your trespasses can be expressed in three questions. The first question that I need to ask is, was God really serious about this? And I believe the answer is yes, God was serious about it. The second question we need to ask is, will God really implement what He said? And I think He would. He would implement what He said. And the third question that I need to ask is, do we really understand what God has said? And do we know that God would implement what He said? And I believe the answer to that is no. Many people do not realize that God's word is true. And whatever God says, He will do. And that is the reason why we all hold grudges. And that is the reason why we all do not forgive. That is the reason why there's so much of anger and animosity and hatred between one another because the children of God, all of us, 
have basically not learned to forgive. We do not realize the seriousness of unforgiveness. We do not realize that if we don't forgive people, then we disqualify ourselves from the forgiveness that God freely gives us. Now, I want to bring this back to what uh, Paul said. Paul says to Philemon that I do not want to force you to forgive, but your forgiveness and acceptance must be on the basis of your love. And this forgive, same forgiveness relates to us. We need to forgive people not because of the command that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us, not because we will disqualify ourselves from going to heaven, but God wants us to forgive on the basis of love. Why? Because that is the same basis in which He has forgiven us. Forgive as I have forgiven you. I've forgiven you because I love you and I want to forgive you. So you also forgive the way I have forgiven you, out of love, on the basis of love. Point two, forgiveness and acceptance brings out usefulness in others. Verse 10 and 11, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who has become my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. The second thing I want to share with you is that forgiveness and acceptance brings out the usefulness in others. Now, uh, Paul is using a play of words here. He says, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who has become my son while I was in chains. And then he says, for he was formerly useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. Now, the name Onesimus, Onesimus comes from the root word Oninemi, which basically means to be useful, to be of profit, to receive an a profit or an advantage to be helped. So the name Onesimus is basically helpful, someone who profits, someone who brings an advantage. So owning Onesimus is an advantage and, and that's what his name means. But Paul says that Onesimus who at one time has become useless to you has become now useless useful to me and he's not only become useful to me but he's also become useful to you so uh, Paul says that now the usefulness of Onesimus has been restored and that's what I want to share with you because sin robs us of our usefulness once we walk out of God once we walk into sin we become useless we lose our usefulness we are no longer useful to our master and uh, we come under bondage because sin creates bondage sin takes away our ability to function normally uh, and sin takes away our, our ability to serve god so until there is forgiveness until there is acceptance until there is some kind of redemption uh, we are useless and we are in bondage so unforgiveness both ways robs us of our usefulness so in this sense if, if there was unforgiveness then not only would Onesimus be useless to his master but his master would not be able to profit from the usefulness of Onesimus. And that's what uh, Paul is saying, that unforgiveness robs us of our usefulness and unforgiveness uh, creates bondages. Now, how do we lose our usefulness? Unforgiveness creates bitterness and strife. Our hearts draw our attention to the sin. And once we keep our focus on sin, we lose our, our usefulness because we fall under bondage. And we not only fall under bondage, but we create bondage in other people. But on the contrary, when we forgive, forgiveness adds value to our life. Forgiveness adds usefulness. Our 
lives are transformed. And that's what we see in Onesimus' life when Paul forgave him and when, when, when Paul uh, brought the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ into his life, he became a different person. He was now useful. When we forgive, we release people. We release them out of their bondages. And once we release people out of the bondages, they become useful. They not only become useful, but they also become useful to us. So Paul adds value to Onesimus. In verse 12, he says, I'm sending him who is my very heart back to you. In verse 13, he says, I would like to keep him so that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains for the gospel. So what he basically says that, that Onesimus is so valuable to me that he is now my very heart and that I would love to have him because he's so useful to me, but now I'm sending it back to you so that that usefulness could be a blessing to you. And that's what Paul uh, says. I want to share with you this incident that happened during the Korean War and um, a, a man who was running an orphanage was arrested and he was arrested by a uh, young communist leader and uh, during that time uh, the sentence that was uh, given to this man was that he would be put to death uh, but this young communist leader this soldier uh, decided that instead of putting this man to death he would kill his son instead so he killed his 19 year old son instead of the father because he felt that the father was still beneficial, he could still use uh, the father for other things, uh, but he killed the father's son. Now, many years later, the war was over and the United Nations came into Korea and uh, many of the soldiers who had brutally killed uh, people were taken to task and this young man was brought to justice and he was sentenced to death. Uh, but the father, uh, the uh, Christian father, what he did was he went to the United Nations and he pleaded for this young man's life, this young man's soldier's, this young soldier's life. And um, he said that he would give him a home and he would help change and rehabilitate him and make him into a good person. And that's what the father did. The father who had lost his son under the hands of this young communist soldier was now willing to take this soldier who was sentenced to death into his home in order to provide a new life for him, a new beginning for him. So he gave him a new life, he forgave him, he accepted him and because he forgave him and accepted him, he made him useful again. And as the narrative goes, uh, this young man, this young uh, soldier, uh, communist soldier who had murdered many people during his time eventually got transformed and became a pastor to lead other people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he received that forgiveness and because he received that forgiveness he was willing to bring that forgiveness, the grace of God into the lives of other people. So he who was rendered by the United Nations to be totally useless became useful simply on the basis of one man's forgiveness. And that's what I would like to share. When we forgive, when we accept people, we put usefulness back into their lives. Point three. Forgiveness has a price. Charge it to me. Verse 17 and 18. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. Forgiveness has a price and Paul says, charge it to me. And I, I believe much more than saying charge it to me, Paul wants Philemon to understand the concept of forgiveness or the concept of our lives in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he mentions three things here. The first thing he says is if you consider me a partner and then he goes on to say that welcome him as you would welcome me and then he says uh, but if he 
has done you any wrong or he owes you anything, then charge it to me. And I will break up and, and look at each one of these things uh, clearly. The first thing that he says is that if you consider me a partner, he the word used is coin koinonos, which basically means a sharer, uh, an associate, or one who partakes with together, or a partner, uh, someone who we have fellowship with. But it comes from a root word, koinos, which basically means together and having everything common. So Paul is saying that, that we are together, we are partners, we are associates, we have everything common. Um, and if I have forgiven, then you also have to forgive. And if I have accepted, then you also have to accept. And then the second thing he says, this, that uh, he not only says that uh, he has everything common with uh, Philemon, but he also says, I want you to welcome him as you welcome me. Because now he is saying that I have everything common with Onesimus. I and Onesimus have become the same person. He is now me. He represents me. And so if you want to welcome me, then you have to welcome him. Um, uh, so he says, welcome him as you would welcome me. And the third thing he says is that if he has done anything wrong, then charge it to me. Charge it to me. Uh, he says that if he owes you anything or has done you anything wrong, then I will return it. I will pay uh, for it. But then he goes on to say something very strange in the next verse. In verse 19, Paul says, I... Paul am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. He says that I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. That means I will pay it back, but not to mention that you owe me your very life. Now, I think these three things are very important because they relate to our life in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they relate to how we see other people who have wronged us. The first thing that he said is that if you consider me a partner, and the Lord Jesus Christ may say the same thing to us, if you consider me a partner, if you consider having fellowship with me, if you are one in togetherness, having everything common with me, then just as I forgive, you also need to forgive. Then he goes on to say, welcome him as you would welcome me. Now the Lord Jesus Christ says, all the people that has, have sinned against us, all the people who have done wrong things to us, when you see them, you need to see me. And that's what Mother Teresa uh, saw in the life of the people who were poor and the destitute and those who were dying on the streets. She said, I saw, the, I see the face of Christ when I look at them. So the Lord Jesus Christ tells us that we need to welcome them, those who have done wrong to us, the way we welcome Him. So when we see them, we are not filled with anger, we are not filled with bitterness, we are not filled with hatred, but we are filled with the same love we have for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he says, welcome them as you would welcome me. And then he goes on to say, if there's anything that they have done against you, I will pay back. I will pay back. If people have hurt you, if they have uh, destroyed your life, if they have uh, done something that they have stolen from you, then all these things I will pay back. I will compensate you. I will return for you. And we know that many times in our lives when people cheat us, when we, people mistreat us, when people do bad things to us, we have already been compensated. And the Lord has already returned it to us. So uh, that's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. But 
when we think of all these things that the Lord is appealing to us, Paul says in verse 19, I am writing with my own hand that I will pay back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. And when the Lord Jesus Christ says that to us, uh, if the Lord were to say that I am writing with my very hand and he shows us his hand with the nail mark and then he says I will pay back and then he says but not to mention that everything I did for you on the cross was done for you and you owe everything to me I believe when we really realize that we cannot hold anything against anybody else because we know that we ourselves are so sinful and we cannot actually charge it to the Lord because He has paid everything for every one of us. So having said that, I would like to come back to the three things that I mentioned today. The first is forgiveness and acceptance is basically an element of love. It's a matter of love. The second thing I, sh I shared is uh, when we forgive and when we accept, we bring out the usefulness in other people. And finally, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said that if anyone owes us anything, we are to charge it to him. And ultimately, that we owe him our very life. So, uh, my brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we really think about what the Lord Jesus Christ said, as demonstrated in the life of Paul, Onesimus and Philemon, I think we have got nothing else to say but to freely forgive on the basis of love. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you teach us to be people who love and people who forgive and people who accept those who have wronged us. And we want to pray even today, this day, as we meditate upon this word, we want to pray that the clarity of your word will come into our hearts. And on the basis of love, we will have the willingness to freely forgive, knowing that it's only through forgiveness that we can bring the usefulness out of ourselves and out of other people. And after reflecting on everything that the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross for each one of us, we can truly say, Father, that we can never have any grudge upon anyone because the Lord has paid it all for each one of us. So just as we receive that forgiveness, even today, we freely release it into the lives of everyone who have hurt us, who owes us, who have harmed us. In the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The benediction, as the Lord has forgiven, let us go and forgive one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and the blessings of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Thank you for joining us once again at our Golden Lampstand online service. We pray that uh, the Word of God would have ministered to you and um, I believe you all need to learn a lot about forgiveness and much more than learning, we need to release it into the lives of the people around us. God bless you. Have a blessed week.